welcome to worship on Sunday, September 17th, 2023. Special welcome to all visitors today. I want to uh, make sure you're all aware that, that all baptized Christians are welcome to the table of Holy Communion when we share that today. The way we share communion uh, is you can come forward down the center aisle. Um, if you're on that side, you'll go that way. This side, you'll go this way. You can take a cup as you go past the table. Uh, you'll be given a, a piece of bread or a wafer to eat, and then the, the cup will be filled with wine, and you can drink that, and the empty cups can go on either side. You return to your pew via side aisle. Um, children who uh, are not yet receiving communion are welcome to come forward for a blessing. I ask that they come forward like this as a way to show, uh, show us that they're coming for a blessing. So today we celebrate the holy baptism of Halo Bazone. Welcome, Halo. Where's Halo? There she is. Uh, we're so glad you're with us today, and we look forward to getting to know you more in the future as you grow up. Um, there is a new section on our bulletin board out in the narthex that's marked Community Events. Uh, that section of the bulletin board is free for anyone to put something up. Feel free to put up flyers for events or job openings or even your business card. Um, anything put up uh, may be taken down if the information gets out of date or if it's been up there for a very long time. So please uh, make use of it and uh, make sure to check it out from time to time as well. Uh, Sarah has an announcement today regarding pump. members of our task force each Sunday for six weeks. Um, today, our second talk in the series is from Brooks Baker. Come on up, Brooks. Good morning, everyone. I'm here this morning to invite you all to consider our first fundraising activity that was developed during our task force meetings. I personally have been helping at the Jacktown Steam Engine Show for the past nine to ten years with our local football and wrestling teams. The parents of our athletes work during the shows to help offset their work bonds. Our teams began this journey with Jacktown because like many organizations, help from volunteers starts to dwindle and receiving a donation from Jacktown has afforded our teams to include new equipment, reconditioning of equipment, and the management of our facilities. In October, Jacktown has a few areas where food is sold. This October, the church has been invited to participate in the kitchen area. The football team will be continuing, but in two other areas. For the church to participate, we would need to fill spaces that require the kit. <clears throat> sorry. We would need to fill the spaces that are required to run the kitchen area while it is open. Most of us have worked at Blue Valley, so we are used to this type of food service. While Jacktown serves more food and is at a quicker pace, all the prep work and cleanup is not required for our participation. Jacktown will give us a percentage of the total sales. Like any show, the weather can be our friend or not. Pop Church needs to start somewhere with fundraising, and this would only be a four to five hour commitment which is our shift. Our hope is that we can start doing this in October. Not only, in, <clears throat> not only is this community outreach, but we can also get a financial return for our volunteering. Please consider helping out in the fundraiser, and we will also have fun working together. A sign-up sheet is now located in the Narthex for anyone interested in helping during the Jacktown show. We are asking that the sign-up sheet will be collected after next Sunday. So that, so that in case we cannot fill all the slots, another group will, be needed, will need to be notified. If you have any questions about this, please reach out to myself, 
Jackie, Tina, or Jim with any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brooks. Uh, if there are no other announcements I neglected to make, then the time has come for us to worship the Lord. Let us quiet our voices and our hearts as we begin with the prelude. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross, the spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others, for the harm we have caused, known and unknown, 
forgive us for the unjust demands we place on others and your creation forgive us for the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor forgive us lead us back to you and set us on the right path in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior Amen. beloved in Christ God's justice stretches beyond all understanding God's compassion is beyond compare in Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. <laughs> grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the young and young at heart to come forward for story time. Have a seat wherever you like. Yeah, there's a lot of kids today. Good. Good morning. Good morning. Well, today Jesus told his disciples a story about forgiveness. And he told this story because Peter asked him a question. That question was, Lord, how many times should I forgive someone who does something wrong to me? Is seven times enough? Now, we don't know exactly why Peter asked that, but 
I wonder if maybe something like this happened. Ben, I want you to be a volunteer today, and there's a reason I want it to be you. Stand up. You're going to be Peter, and I'm going to be Bartholomew. Bartholomew was also one of Jesus' disciples, so come here, Peter. So, I'm going to imagine, we don't know much about Bartholomew, so I'm going to imagine Bartholomew was the class clown. So Bartholomew poked Peter. That's why I wanted it to be you, I didn't want to poke anybody else. And then he, he said, oh, I'm sorry, would you please forgive me? Would you forgive me? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, would you forgive me? Oh, I'm sorry, would you forgive me? Oh, I'm sorry, would you forgive me? I don't know for sure that this is what happened, but I wonder if that's what happened. And then Peter went up to Jesus and said, Lord, how many times do I have to forgive someone? Is seven times enough? And Jesus said, you can be seated now, thank you. Jesus said, not seven times, but 77 times. What do you think Peter thought when he heard that? He was surprised. You think he thought, oh no, Bartholomew's going to keep poking me 77 times. Well, then Jesus told the disciples this story. He said, one day a king decided to call his servants in and have them give an account of all that they owed to him. Well, one person was brought in who owed the king a hundred zillion dollars. That's a lot, right? Well, the guy didn't have that kind of money to pay what he owed, so the king said, well then throw him out and his family, sell them all into slavery. But the man got down on his knees and begged the king, please, please have mercy on me, and I will pay you every cent I owe. Well, the king felt sorry for him, and he let him go free, and he even told him, you know what, you don't have to pay back any of that money. That's forgiveness, right? How do you think that guy felt? Pretty happy, I bet. Well, that man who was just forgiven a hundred zillion dollars, you know what he did? He went out and he happened to come across another person who owed him about two hundred dollars. So he grabbed that man by the throat and said, pay me what you owe me. I'm not really going to grab your throat. Pay me what you owe me. And the man got down, that man got down on his knees and said, please, please be patient with me. I'll pay you everything. But the first man said, no, if you can't pay me, you're going to prison with your family. So, when the king found out about this, what do you think the king did? The king probably told him to pay the money. Could be. Could be. Because what do you think? This guy was forgiven a hundred zillion dollars and then when someone owed him two hundred dollars he threw him in jail. So I think this is kind of like how it is with us. God forgives us everything. Everything we've ever done wrong and everything we're ever going to do wrong. And God wants us to forgive others too. Even when people poke you over and over and over again. Now forgiveness doesn't mean letting them keep poking you. Peter might have been better off to just walk away and leave Bartholomew alone. But forgiving him means that you don't stay angry with him and you don't go trying to get revenge on him. So, that sounds, does that sound easy or hard? What do you think? Who thinks easy? Who thinks hard? Mm -hmm. It maybe, depends. Maybe it depends, that's a good point. So thank you for coming up today, thank you for listening and uh, let's bow our heads for a prayer. Dear God, Thank you for forgiveness. Help us to forgive each other too. Amen. Okay, thanks. You go back to your seats. You reading? A reading from Genesis. After Jacob's death, the brothers of Joseph begged for forgiveness for the crime they had done against him. You intended to do me harm, Joseph said, but God used this as an opportunity to do good and save many lives. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? 
So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Josh, Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm for me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as God is doing today. So have no fear. I, will, I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, Joseph reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. Psalm 103. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You will not always accuse us, nor will you keep your anger forever. You have not dealt with us according to our sins, nor repaid us according to our inequities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is your steadfast love for those who fear you. As far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so you have compassion for those who fear you, O Lord. A reading from Romans. This Christian community has significant struggles with diversity. Here Paul helps us understand that despite different practices in worship and personal piety, we do not judge one another. All Christians belong to the Lord, Jesus Christ who died for all of us and will judge each of us. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling other opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despite those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat. For, judge, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Would all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we, if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For, this end, for to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despite your brother's or sister, for we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God, so then each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, 
Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Well, then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused, and he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. And when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to the king all that had taken place. Then the king summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, his lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay the entire debt. So my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Good morning, Halo. I'm so glad you're here today. Today you will be baptized. But I have to apologize to you. You see, when someone's baptized at Prince of Peace, whether it's an adult or a baby or a young child like you, I usually talk directly to that person throughout the entire sermon. But today I'm not going to do that, not for the whole sermon. So for that I'm sorry, and I hope you can forgive me. I do hope she can forgive me. Forgiveness, in fact, is what we're talking about today, and forgiveness is hard. I'm not sure Halo's ready for it. Are any of us? Really? Let's look in the Gospel. Jesus, Peter asked Jesus, Lord, if someone sins against me, how often do I have to forgive? Seven times? Nope. Not seven. Seventy-seven. In fact, in some ancient manuscripts, it says seven hundred and, or no, excuse me, it says 70 times 7. Either way, that's a lot. Enough that you'll lose count. Jesus calls us to forgive one another over and over and over again until we lose track of how much forgiveness we've given. That's hard. I can think of several people I have not yet forgiven for things, not completely. I have failed to fulfill Jesus' command here. Have you? Well, then Jesus tells us a story about forgiveness. He tells about a king who forgives one of his servants a debt of 10,000 talents. But that servant then fails to forgive one of his fellow servants a debt of 100 denarii. But what's a talent? What's a denarius? Well, I looked them up, and the best guess I can make is that the 100 denarii that the second servant owed the first is about $10,000 in today's money, more or less. Not a paltry sum. But how much did the first servant owe the king? Six billion dollars. Not million, billion. And then he says, have patience with me and I'll pay you. Really? <laughs> I didn't think it was possible to go that far into debt. What bank, what investor would ever allow someone to owe them that much? Well, ten thousand dollars, sure, that's a car loan. But six billion? I don't think this is really about money. I think this is about another kind of debt. A kind of debt that we do owe. A debt we can never pay ourselves. The debt we owe to God. God made us and made us to be his servants in the world, but how many times do we fail to do that? How many times already today have you failed to trust that God will take care of you? How many times today have you failed to love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind? How many times today have you failed to love your neighbor as yourself? 
and it's still morning. How many times have you failed God this year? How many times have you failed God since you were as small as Halo? I don't know about you, but for me that number is uncountable. It might as well be six billion. That's the debt I owe to God. And what did God do with that debt? God forgave it. Through the death and resurrection of Christ, God has forgiven us for all of it. All of it, including those sins we haven't even committed yet. Those are forgiven as well. All of it, just like the king forgave the servant. And how do we know this to be true? Well, halo through our baptism. Through the same baptism that you will experience in just a few minutes, God promises that along with the water that pours on your head, that poured on all of our heads, the gift of forgiveness also pours. The forgiveness only God can give, the forgiveness of six billion dollars worth of sin. And it's through that same baptism that we are called to forgive one another, to forgive the ten thousand dollars worth of sin that we accrue against one another. And boy, doesn't it sound like Jesus is threatening us if we don't do that? The king throws the first servant in prison, and then Jesus says, So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. So at first glance, it sounds like God will take back forgiveness if we fail. But that's not the God we see throughout Scripture. Throughout Scripture, that God is overflowing with grace and love and forgiveness, and there's nothing that can separate us from that. Nothing at all, including our own failures. Failing to forgive our neighbor is, in fact, among the sins that God forgives. Now, I think Jesus is telling us what failing to forgive does to us. I think he knows that if we do not forgive, we will feel like we're imprisoned. Rabbi Harold Kushner tells this story. A woman in my congregation comes to see me. She's a single mother, divorced, working to support herself and three young children. She says to me, since my husband walked out on us, every month is a struggle to pay our bills. I have to tell my kids that we have no money to go to the movies while he's living it up with his new wife in another state. How can you tell me to forgive him? And I answer her, I'm not asking you to forgive him because what he did was acceptable. It wasn't. It was mean and selfish. I'm asking you to forgive because he doesn't deserve the power to live in your head and turn you into a bitter, angry woman. I'd like to see him out of your life emotionally as completely as he is out of it physically, but you keep holding on to him. You're not hurting him by holding on to that resentment, but you're hurting yourself. Or in the words of a famous quote, resentment is drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Forgiveness is something Jesus calls us to do because the alternative is our own suffering. Forgiveness is something Jesus calls us to do, not primarily for the sake of the other person, but for our own sake. And that's also why forgiveness does not always mean continuing in a relationship with that person. Someone who's being abused should not stay in that relationship. He or she deserves to get out. In a case like that, forgiveness does not mean re returning for more abuse. In a case like that, forgiveness means getting out, but then letting go of the anger, the hurt, the desire for revenge. In a case like that, forgiveness is really, really hard. And it usually takes years. But Jesus tells us that it is possible. And I think a clue to how it's possible is in that story Jesus told. What the wicked servant failed to see was that because he'd been forgiven the enormous debt he owed, he didn't need the money from the other servant. The gift he received from the king was enough. But he didn't see that and he got stuck in a violent and self-destructive cycle. The gift that we've received through Christ is enough. It is enough, and because it's enough, we don't need to hold on to our pain. We don't need to hold on to our anger. We don't need to be justified before others because God has justified us. We do not need to keep ourselves curled up in a ball of resentment. Christ has set us free from that. Thanks to Christ, we have everything we need to share his love and grace and forgiveness with each other.
Now that doesn't mean it's easy. And it doesn't mean it's always quick. But it means it's possible. And I think it starts with saying thank you to God. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for filling me with grace. Thank you for your undying love. And then the next step is saying, help me. Help me, God. Give me the ability to do this. Help me to find the strength I need. And over time, God will. We can trust that because we've received that promise in our baptism. Halo, you're going to receive that promise in just a few minutes. And it's just the beginning for you. I pray that in the years to come, you might discover more and more deeply what that promise means. I pray that you experience God's forgiveness in your life. And I pray that you receive the gift of receiving forgiveness from others. And I pray that you experience the grace of forgiving others. Welcome to a lifetime of forgiveness, Halo. Amen.
In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Who presents this child for baptism? Sponsors, can you read? Oh. Robert, called by, the, call, uh, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your granddaughter baptized into Christ? As you bring Halo to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture her in faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you, <laughs> you do promise to do that, great. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Halo in the Christian faith as you're empowered by God's spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? People of God, do you promise to support Halo and pray for her in her new life in Christ? Now I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. To the parents and sponsor, grandparents and sponsors on behalf of Halo, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? And with the whole congregation, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was risen. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. Almighty Father, we pray for this congregation and the congregations of St. John's and Penargel. Open our hearts to be your hands and feet. Help us to forgive each other, practice patience, and choose welcome over judgment. Move us to care for those in our community seeking refuge and safety. God of compassion. Have mercy on us. Healing Father, we pray for those who are ill and grieving, including Joan, Joan, Shannon, Shannon, Karen, Karen, Renee, Renee, Sandy, Sandy, Keith, Keith, Tim, Tim, Eli, Eli, Stacy, Stacy, Dave, Dave, Bonnie, Bonnie, Joanne, Joanne, Marion, Marion, family and friends of Josh, Josh, Larry, Larry. God of compassion, have mercy on us. Father of all nations, we pray for those who abdicate for justice for the oppressed. Open the eyes and hearts and minds of those in authority to make decisions that reassure those on the margins of society. God of compassion, have mercy on us. Father Creator, we pray for the last days of summer to be filled with sunshine and rain to bring in a bountiful harvest. May we share our bounty with others in need. God of compassion, have mercy on us. Father of all, we pray for an extra portion of joy and happiness this week to Phyllis Beicher, Samuel Blakesley, Wanda McCammon, Levi Ott, Justin Ott, Kelly Hill, as they celebrate their birthdays. May they remember that they are your children. God of compassion. Have mercy on us. Loving Father, we pray for the baptism of Halo. May you watch over and guide your child. God of compassion. 
Have mercy on us. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please stand. And Halo, you might want to watch this. This is the cool part. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raised us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism, yes, you, may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Okay, bring her up here. Halo Elia. <laughs> I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That one's for you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, keep her up here, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain, Halo, with the gift of your spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Okay. Hey, Robert, dip your thumb in the oil and make the sign of the cross. On her. It doesn't matter, it's fine. Halo, Eliah, child of God, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Yeah. You can stand back there. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You can turn and face the congregation. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. The peace of Christ be with you always. And Please share with one another and especially with Halo, a sign of that peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you. Okay. You did great. You can go back to your seats now. Thanks. Yep. Yep.
of plenty. All things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, our bread of life, our table, and our food. You created a world in which all might be satisfied with your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast, and we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and in want, and by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus invites you to this table. Come, eat, and live. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word. 
Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts, strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. at work in you. Thanks.